Greetings hobbyists, this is our Sansa Vool, and in this video we're going to have a look at the Curve Pen tool. So this tool is actually new to Blender 3.2, so if you haven't downloaded that then it's not going to be there, so make sure you've got that downloaded. If you're having a look at this in a version after 3.2, this might have changed slightly, maybe some of the things I'm going to talk about where hopefully I see this going in the future at the end of the video is going to be something that's actually happened, so that would be interesting to see. But either way, I don't expect things to change massively with this tool, and it's already very, very useful, especially because it's going to save you a lot of time. So just to demonstrate this, what I'm going to do is press Shift and a, and I'm just going to bring in a Bezier curve which we've got here. I'm going to press Z so I'm seeing this from top view and let's tab and go into edit mode. Obviously if you don't have machine tools then you're going to see a slightly different menu when you press tab or it's going to go straight into this mode and that's fine. So first of all let's have a quick talk about what we'd have to do previously to continue on with this curve. So if I wanted to continue with this curve what I'd have to do normally or before the curve pen is come to the last vertex press e which is going to extrude another version i can move that around to somewhere like that and if i want to change the handles which determines the path of this curve which are the two bits coming out i can either click on one press g to grab it and rotate or i could go to the center point press r and rotate and then E to extrude another one and then R to rotate it and then because of this mess I might have to press S to scale it. it. Either way this was quite a slow time consuming process so if you were doing something like copying an icon or something like that you probably wouldn't do it this way you'd do it with individual vertices that you're just extruding out because this was just a pain but no more. So what I'm going to do is press A to select all the vertices and delete this. So you'll notice we're still in the Bezier curve at this point. And then I'm going to select the curve pen and let's have a look at what this does. So all you do is click and it creates a new vertex that is part of a curve. So I could just click there and then there and then there and then there and then there. And if I want to, I can come back to the original one, click on that and it's going to join these together. So a really quick way, even if I was just using this for creating vertices, to create those vertices. I don't have to extrude the points and move them. And I could easily just convert this to a mesh by just going into object mode, object, convert to, and then mesh. And then I've got my individual vertices. I'm just going to undo those stages. So I've got this here. Back to the curve. Now what's even better about this is, and again, I'm just still within the curve pen, I haven't changed anything. If I go to one of the edges, notice not where one of the vertices is, and I can just grab that and pull it. And I can start manipulating these curves into a more, well, rounded shape. And this becomes really easy to manipulate however I want to be able to make this shape. Or I can just click on a vertex and then I can grab one of the handles and start moving it around. I don't need to press G, I just click on it and drag. And if I don't want to move these separately, I want it to maintain a smooth curve, I can just go to the center point, double click, and you'll see that changes the symbol here, and now I can move those around and they're connected. You can also do this by going to the center point and clicking V and changing it to one of the different handle types, but I've just been liking the double click method. Now, if I delete all of these by pressing A and delete, what's even better than this is you can actually save even more time. So if I click and then click and hold down, I'm straight away into this mode of being able to affect the handles. I suddenly don't have to press R to rotate. I don't have to press S to scale. Everything is being done straight away. And I can just click over here and do another one and then come over here and do another one still. Now what's really cool about this is say I'm here and I'm not making this curve in a way that I want to. If you press and hold control, what that will do is now it starts affecting the curve or the handles of the point before. And you can just take your finger off control to come back to the one that you're currently on or the one that was happening before. So this is really useful for those fine scale manipulations. What's even better about this is if I go and click on this one before and I grab on this handle, what I can do is while I'm playing with this handle that's connecting to this point, if I press control, it now starts affecting the curve or the handles on the point in that direction of the handle. So it's not just the one before, I can do the one that's coming after it or I can go to this one, do the same thing, and then press control to manipulate that other one. This is going to save so much time. I mean, you've gone from having to move from R to S to E to do different things to literally you just need your hand over or your finger over control while you click. 
Um, what's even better than that is they've also set it up that so that say if I wanted to add a point here, if I just hold control and click, it creates a new point and I can move that around. Or if I came to this one and hold control and press click and keep my mouse down, it's done exactly the same thing. It's allowing me to manipulate those points. Though interestingly, this now has control or holding it down as what affects the point that I've just made. And if I take my finger off, I'm now affecting the point that is occurring after it. Finally, if there's a point or a vertex that you want to get rid of, if you hold your mouse over it and press control and click, it deletes that point as well. So everything is being done with your left mouse and control pretty much. Obviously, as I said, you could go into this one and press V, but I wouldn't, I'd just be double clicking. So you've got almost no different controls to have to fiddle around with. And if you've come to this point or you want to, what you can do is select that other vertex. So notice I was moving clockwise with this, but now I click that last one, I can start creating a curve off of that. So you don't have to stick in the one direction. And if I want to connect these up, I can still click on that last one and it connects this up to be cyclical. So it's working in one circle. And what's great about this as well, though I haven't worked out which one's probably faster, I'm not sure, but if I wanted to, I can, I'm just gonna go back out into object mode, delete this, I can shift an A, and instead of bringing in a Bezier curve, I can come down here, notice not this one here, to this circle. And this has now got a filled object. If I just press A and delete, and delete all the vertices, then again, exactly the same tools, but now, because I was in this filled circle mode, when I select on that last one, it's going to create a filled circle. And if I just go into object mode, object, convert, and convert to mesh, one thing I will show you quickly is that if I go into vertex mode, this is a little bit of a mess with all of these edges having been created. What you can do is just come over to here, add a modifier, and what you want to do is a decimate modifier which is just here. And then instead of collapse, you want to change it to planar. And you'll notice when I did this, if you have a look at the bottom here, it, it took away some of that smoothness. If I go back to planar and change that angle limit from five degrees, which means that from each of these points, so from there to there, if this angle change is not five degrees or more, it's gonna delete them. If I change that down to let's say something like one, go back into object mode, you'll see that that's left that quite smooth. And when I click apply all and go into vertex mode again, you'll see all those edges have been got rid of. And now it's nice and easy face mode. If I wanted to say E to extrude that up, I've got this nice solid object, which again, if I was trying to copy some sort of icon or design an icon, this would be a really great way of doing it. It's gonna save me loads of time trying to make this smooth shape or subdividing it afterwards. I can just do this with the curves. Now there is one more thing that I want to show that this could do, and then I'm gonna talk about a couple of limitations. If I bring in a Bezier curve again, and press A to have selected both of them, if I haven't got one selected preferentially, so for example, like here, if I've got both selected, what's gonna happen when I do this is it's going to actually extend both of them. And I could use this to make some sort of funky shape. And you'll notice it tries to keep the distance of the vertices the same. That vertices distance, two of these increments apart. This one's two increments apart. These are two increments apart on the x-axis. So it seems to try and keep those. It is a bit tricky to work with because you'll notice that, well, when I click the mouse, it puts it perfectly in between those. Just something to get used to. And obviously you can just come back afterwards and start fiddling around with this as much as you want. And again, it's really quick to do because you don't have to keep using all those shortcut keys to manipulate everything. And if I just want to select the last one, I can then click that one and it will join together. So really, really quick and easy. Now in this, again, I'm just gonna bring in a Bezier curve and then A and delete those vertices. So I've got something new. So I could just come in here and let's say click there, there. And you'll notice that this is being nice and angular because I've got my extrusion handle as vector which means i can do this you can change it to auto so for example i could do that and then that and that and that and it's got a nice curve to it and then click on the last one and it joins if i just delete those go back to vector but as well as that what's great about this is using these background points that i've got here so the increments i could create something let's go to about there and then let's come up I don't know there curve that round 
something like that. Hold down control and affect the other one as well. So let's move that to somewhere about there. And then there we go. Two, there. And then all the way down to here. And then let's connect up to the last one. And then I'm just going to come in here and move that. So suddenly this could be a really good way of making the detailing around, let's say, a column. Be really quick to fiddle around with this and sort this out. And actually that one probably doesn't want to be there. That's looking a lot better, so it's a bit more symmetrical. But there are problems with this. Like, these aren't perfectly aligned. And yes, I can check, grab this, go into snapping mode and vertex, and then, I don't know, G and Y to get that perfectly aligned. But I shouldn't have to do this for every single one of them. Like that one there is definitely not aligned. So G and X. Like I'd have to go through every single one of these. It would be really nice if there was a mode that we could set it so that the mouse actually automatically aligns to the increments. Or that when you click, this vertex goes to the closest increment so that you can do this exactly. Like that would be an amazing add-on. And suddenly you're getting into something that's pretty much just really quick, easy CAD where you're just perfectly going to specific points. So that'd be an amazing thing to see if that actually happened. The other thing that I don't quite like about this or would be a really good addition is if you're doing something for a modeling point of view, like this would be a great way of making something like a cable or a rope or string that's going around something. And if you bring in a, let's say a quad sphere and Instead of this being a quad sphere, let's just say that this was a person or something that you've made. It'd be really good if you could just bring in some sort of curve. There it is in the middle. And if I just went to edit mode and delete the vertices and then go out of x-ray mode, it'd be awesome if this automatically just could snap or connect to these faces. You'll notice that if I put snapping on face, this isn't going to do anything. It only works when it moves. So I can do this here, but it... As soon as I go into x-ray mode and move around, you'll see this is actually sort of in the middle of the sphere. This hasn't gone on the outer edge of it. And I mean, think how useful that would be if you could just do point, 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 point. Oops, that was, uh, let's double click on that one. And let's go to there and connect that up to that and double click that one. I mean, this is a curve. So I could come over here and just use the geometry and just change this to have a depth to it. So suddenly you've got, if I up that to something like 16, you've suddenly got something that could be a rope. And if this was a figure, you could have that being wrapped round the person really quickly and easily. Or even if it's just a surface, that'd be so easy to do. And this shouldn't be beyond the scope of what Blender can do. I mean, if you have a look at the annotation pencil, so what used to be called the grease pencil, if I do this, you'll notice that it's, well, it's again in the middle of the sphere, but there is an option up here where the placement can be done to be placed on a surface. And if I draw that on here and move around, you can see now it's being placed on that surface. I mean, that would be amazing if you could do this with the placement of these vertices. I don't know, maybe it will happen in the future. I mean, it'd be something absolutely amazing to see, or maybe someone will bring in or invent some sort of add-on that does this. But either way, without this, this is still gonna be a massively time-saving tool and something that I think is really important that people are aware of. So hopefully you're gonna find that new tool as useful as I am and you're as sort of hyped about it as me. I know it sounds like something really simple, but it's gonna make a massive difference to a lot of people's workflow. And do say in the comment section, how do you see yourself using this? Is there gonna be something that you want from this that it doesn't seem to do yet? Or is there something where you can already see this is gonna be really helpful? Just throw something down in the comments. It's always great to hear from people and see what they're planning to do.